Does Nest know when you've been sleeping? We'll find out on September 20th how small social networks helped out in Hurricane Harvey, our favorite Amazon Echo skills, and pour one out for the $400 Wi-Fi juicer. All that and so much more. Micah Sargent is here on Tech News Today. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Tech News Today, episode 1845, recorded Friday, September 1st, 2017. This episode of Tech News Today is brought to you by Grasshopper. Stay connected and run your business from your mobile phone with Grasshopper. To save $50 on your order, visit trygrasshopper.com slash twit. Welcome to Tech News Today. This is a show where we hit you with the tech news. We hit you hard, but you're going to like it. I am Megan Maroney. Jason Howell is on vacation today, but joining me straight from his smart home is Micah Sargent from iMore. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. I've already been hit hard, and it was great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I just let the words come out, and you I know like how it, it is. Like you're, it. You're, you do a lot of podcasts. Just uh, got to let it flow. Yeah, you just hope that they come out and make sense to someone. So I'm glad they made <laughs> sense to you. <laughs> and uh, if they don't, it's like improv. You just say yes and you keep moving yeah, along. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Micah, of course, is the smart home expert at I'm More, and we love having him him on. He does so many podcasts. I, uh, you're just going to have to follow him on Twitter to see. Although you don't talk too much about your podcasts and your work on Twitter, I've noticed. But you are very funny on Twitter. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I try to. I, I think there's like a little tiny bit of embarrassment about how many podcasts I do. It's like, oh man, whenever I put them all together, it's like I should probably stop putting my voice out there. It's too many, too many podcasts. No, we're gonna we're gonna put your voice out there right now. We're gonna talk about some tech news. <laughs> tech execs are throwing their weight around on behalf of a political and a moral issue that the president is considering. It's also an issue that could affect some of their employees and certainly many of their customers. Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Google, and other tech companies are urging. Trump not to change the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA. This is the Obama-era poli era policy that protected young adults who were brought to the United States as children. Uh, they're called Dreamers, and uh, we told them that they would not be deported as long as they obtained and renewed work permits. Trump says he's going to decide whether or not to scale back these protections, and he'll uh, make that announcement on Tuesday. Meanwhile, Forward.us, that's F wd.us an organization backed by mark zuckerberg has posted an open letter to president trump voicing uh his concern voicing their concerns it's about 300 business leaders um and just saying you know repeating what uh the what really happened which was that these people willingly came forward uh on the understanding that they would be protected they've gone through extensive background checks um and they're diligently giving back to our communities and paying income taxes and uh, they are urging the president not to uh, scale back on these protections. What do you think, Micah? <sighs> so, you know, whenever we first came here from other places, uh, I seem to remember that, uh, you know, the Native Americans who lived here also said that it was okay if we stay. And then they didn't know. I, th th this is this is this is really frustrating. I think, uh, you know, when when you look at the the statistics here, I'm going to quote some stuff from the the actual document. Ninety seven percent are in school or in the workforce. Five percent started their own businesses. Sixty five percent have purchased a vehicle, and sixteen percent have purchased their first home. That is like these are these are successful people. Many of these people are are doing what some Americans who live here maybe aren't even doing. And to to you know to go forward and say, hey, this is what we're going to do. All you have to do is come forward and like get all these background checks, all of your information put out there. That's like the, the hardest part for me in, in being able to accept any of this. Like the, the idea that we're just going to say, hey, now that we got you and we know where you are and we know exactly who you are, now we're gonna roll those back. That just it just seems wrong and it doesn't seem American. It really doesn't. And so what do you think about all these tech companies coming forward? I mean, we're looking at the list now. If you're watching, there's a lot of them. And yeah. And I, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, I, I think that that's because Silicon Valley and all of these other, you know, tech companies 
everywhere else in the United States. Like many of the people who who are these streamers are working for these companies. And so it's no surprise. Like this is probably, you know, 70 percent uh, business sense and 30 percent just being good companies <laughs> if the, the ratio isn't even you know less than that. But I you know, whether it's it's for doing good or it is just smart business sense, like if we want to look at things in what I like to call the Vulcan method, where we like pull away all emotion and just look at things logically, like if we have these people and they want to be here and they want to make the cool stuff that we get to use, then I think that we should let that be the case. And if these businesses are coming together, these tech companies are coming together and saying, hey, uh, these dreamers are doing awesome things and we don't want to lose them, then makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And also just, I mean, just being a place that we want other people to come to as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, just that, that we're welcoming. Because, of course, I mean, these are the people that were brought here by their parents illegally for, you know, whatever mm -hmm. reason. So, so there's that. I don't know if I mentioned that in the intro. But but, but they, they were children then. That was, wasn't mm -hmm. their choice. And so to punish them now, and especially just to, to not know. There was a lot of, there was a lot of just, well, I'm going to announce it today. I'm going to announce it tomorrow. But Tuesday is when we're going to hear about it, uh, whether or not. So just, just the idea that. That he's making these threats and just letting people um, wait around to, to find out what is going to happen to their <sighs> futures. That's horrifying. I mean, I, I you know, there, there's almost no level of, of empathy that I can have in that situation because I couldn't even compare it to any situation in my life. But but certainly sympathy there. Like, I cannot imagine what it must be like to not know sort of what comes next and whether all the things that you're doing in the United States, like you can keep doing or you can't because uh, the, this this change might happen. And yeah, certainly the, the idea that they were brought here um, illegally with, you know, no uh, choice. And then again, the idea that we said, okay, you know, you're here. And as long as you register and as long as you do all of these things, then you'll get to stay here. Now they're here and they, they you know, they're following the rules and they're doing all that stuff. And now we're rolling that back. Like if people had this all set up and maybe don't have other plans. So I certainly feel for, for everybody who fits uh, in this description and is sort of wondering what could happen next. It's, it's pretty scary. It is. Well, moving on, smart thermostat company Nest is teasing a big announcement on September 20th. The invite mentions popcorn and a couch. So I'm thinking that it's probably a smart couch that makes popcorn <laughs> as soon as you sit down on it and turn on Netflix. Uh, what do you think they're going to announce? You know, I sort of like the popcorn Netflix couch. Um, no, I have no idea, Megan, honestly. Um, so so here, like, if Nest says, hey, we're going to be announcing something new, I'm immediately thinking it's some sort of smart home technology. It's going to be uh, a camera or it's going to be, uh, I don't know, a new Nest thermostat. But they've already got that in the works. So what else could Nest make? I, I mean, I, it's got to be some sort of smart home technology. But a couch that makes popcorn maybe seems a little bit out there. Um, <laughs> could, it, could it be... A home entertainment system? Are they going to make the TV that Apple never made? <laughs> that would be interesting. So like a Nest TV? Maybe it's a projector. Oh. Maybe they're going to make their own Pico projector. <laughs> so you uh, you have a Nest cam that you watch your, that you use your, uh, to monitor your, your dogs with, correct? Mm -hmm. Or did you just test mm -hmm. it? Do you, or do you still use it? Yeah, I, I have one set up in my home and I use it to uh, anytime we're away can check in on the pups and make sure they're OK. And uh, also, I mean, it's a good it's a good device to have to just check in on the house. Uh, it, it lets you know if there's certain alerts in certain areas if you use the subscription service. And if you have sounds turned on, yes, but I don't because my dogs will bark at a mouse that runs by. <laughs> you know, they 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 can hear everything. And anytime like a, a delivery person comes to the door to knock, then they've they've got words to say. So I don't have the sound alert turned on, but yes, I certainly use it to monitor the pets whenever I'm out of the home. Um, but maybe, yeah, maybe this is just Nest's next camera or something. I, I'm honestly, I have the, the invite is what confused me because, you know, whenever we look at like new Apple invites, we look at uh, different press invites, a lot of times they sort of hint at what's going to be coming from the company, or at least we like to think they do. And people can sort of make those justifications later. But I had an idea that it was just going to be another camera or another thermostat or something. And then they threw up this invite. And I'm like, I have no idea what you're coming with next. Yeah, I mean, a, a kind of TV or like a streaming device. I mean, why, why would they enter this uh 
I mean, they're, they're, Nest is owned by Google, correct? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so, by Alphabet, probably, Alphabet, yeah. Yeah, by Alphabet. Um, so they, I mean, they already have like Chromecast, that sort of thing. I mean, I don't know what, but an actual TV, that's why you would suggest a TV, like the hard Yeah, thing. yeah, or a, or a projector. If we're like, if we're looking again at the, the invite, because... Um, It's got to be some sort of smart home technology, I would think, that sort of serves both of the companies well. So what is Nest's next step? Because they say it's a big announcement. Um, It's got to be something big. Uh, And I feel like, I don't know, the next edition of the same sort of camera isn't that exciting unless, I don't know, it's it's a robotic camera that can drive around your home or something. It would seem a little uh, boring or, or I would be kind of like, Oh, that's all it was. Where's the confetti cannons and the new the new thing that you've come up with? I don't want another camera. Come on. Right, because your camera's already really smart, right? Is it? It's the smart one that knows. Like you don't have to dig through tons of uh, tons of vid- video to find your dogs, right? It knows exactly. When you- and it's supposed to know, like, when someone's fed the dog too. Is this the one that knows when you fed the dog? Like, just because it knows what it looks like when you feed your dog. So I have I, I don't have the, the most recent edition that has all the extra features that can like tell between different people and uh, I think it like it does face recognition or something like that but I have the one that's right before that and it can it can determine when something is a person versus when something is not a person and so it'll say we think we spotted a person in your living room and it turns out no it's just my dog standing on top of the couch <laughs> so uh, not not quite a person but but good try so yeah I know the the most recent recent version of the Nest Cam so certainly has uh, a few more features that that are smart. But again, they just came out with that not too long ago. So I don't think they're going to come out with another camera. Uh, do you have any ideas other than uh, ca- a popcorn couch? Uh, my only other idea is I am, I'm building on your TV idea that it has face recognition in the TV so that it will change the channel when it thinks I'm bored. <laughs> are you falling asleep? Yeah. Or <laughs> oh, Yes. Yes, that I need. That I actually need because I often fall asleep and my husband is like, are you asleep? How long have you been sleeping? I'm like, I don't know. And then I miss all of Westworld and I have to start yeah. at the beginning again. If I'm binge watching and I fall asleep and it's like, oh, crud, where did I stop? Where was it that mm-hmm. I fell asleep mm-hmm. 10 minutes in? I don't know. <laughs> I think that that's probably what it is. A TV that there we go. fallen asleep and turns off. Mark it down. Mm-hmm. 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 There you go. Okay. All right. Well, if you know what it is or if you have a guest, tweet at me at Megan Maroney. I want to hear your guesses. And if you happen to know, I want to hear your leaks. And I promise not to tell anyone who told me. So many of our us with friends in Texas, friends and family and the surrounding states have been monitoring Facebook's safety check to make sure everyone we know has marked themselves safe. But according to BuzzFeed, it was the smaller social networks that really helped rescuers find people stranded in the floods. A walkie-talkie-like app called Zello and then the neighborhood social network next door were imperfect solutions, but they did help many people communicate throughout Harvey and continue to help them communicate. The disaster is not over and won't be for a while. Now, earlier this week, we also talked about a group led by managing editor at Snopes, Brooke Binkowski, that was scraping Twitter for requests for help too. Uh, Have you ever used any of these? Have you used Zello or do you use Nextdoor? Uh, when I first moved in, whenever we first moved into the place that I live now, we did get a uh, next door invite and I had it on my phone for a while and got a kick out of it every time someone posted about the fact that they saw a deer running around. Um, <laughs> but most of the time it ended up being situations where people were being, you know, were, were afraid of, of things that weren't that big of a deal and sort of making assumptions about people. But it, it was, it got a little gross for me, I guess. It, 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 a lot of times like sort of seemed to sort of spark fear and, and like, you know, people trying to protect themselves from things that weren't anything rather than anything uh, that was, that was helpful. So I laughed at the deer. I cried about the rest of it. No, I, I ended up just shutting it or getting it off my phone. Cause it was just notifications all the time of, of people, you know, making all of these notices. But in terms of, of being able to help in situations like this, I think this is fantastic. And I, I saw on Twitter, there was uh, one person who, and I wish I could remember who it was, and, and maybe you saw it and remember, uh, there was somebody who had offered to, if if people wanted to adopt a dog from one of these shelters, then they were going to pay for the travel and for all the fees involved with adoption. And so people from all over the United States were you know, hitting this website and were 
going to adopt a dog and had signed up and then they he said to send him the the sort of invoice and then he would pay for the travel and he would pay for the fees and i legitimately i uh, messaged my partner and was like do we need another dog at the moment <laughs> because we we could seriously do this and we went to the site and it was down because so many people had gone to it so i love when when you know the internet is actually helpful in things like this and and i like the idea that these sort of smaller social media things are helpful because yeah you can go on a big scale and see like on twitter that um here's an area that's terribly flooded but to like people in the neighborhood are going to know better like what's what's going on and and you know you could talk about like you know that part down the street is flooded or you shouldn't go down that way and people have more of an idea of what that means versus on the grander scale of something like Twitter or Facebook and and i think with yeah with all these apps we don't really it's it's hard to put them into use when when they're to find what you really use them for like an app like zello um on our show ios today i take questions and there was a theater uh he was a he was a high school theater teacher and he had um he wanted an app that would let everyone you know working backstage um have he wanted like a, a walkie-talkie type app so that they could talk to each other. Their hands were, you know, maybe they're, they're, they were using their hands and it couldn't be loud and it could they couldn't text um, and because it was dark sometimes or whatever. And somebody recommended Zello, this app. That was the first I'd heard of it. So it was like a walkie-talkie app. And, that, and it's amazing to me that it was so useful in this situation because you think about it. Um, because people needed to hear each other's voices. They, you know, mm -hmm. it was it was a lot more helpful to say like, "Hey, I need help. I'm on the roof." Not, you know, because you, you know how it is when you're texting back and forth, and you're just like, "What roof? Where?" I mean, it can be so <laughs> slow, and yeah. so it wasn't perfect because sometimes, you know, they the, this BuzzFeed article uh, by Alex Kantrowitz talks about how you know there would be someone who was just would just say. Um, how can I help? And, and it would be silent, you know, and there was, you know, it was, it wasn't a perfect solution and authorities mm. everywhere are saying, this is great that you're using all this, but try 911 first. And that, cause that was what they were afraid people would post on Twitter instead of calling 911. Right. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's really, and I think that we're going to see a lot of interesting technology being used in, in the future as in the cleanup, like there's drones that are surveying the area and trying to, you know, figure out already like having to deal with insurance, which I, I cannot imagine what people are going through. I, yeah. I mean, every time this happens, um, it's, it's all, I mean, there are no words for it, honestly. And, and to, to see kind of, yes, how technology can help out in situations like this, but, um, ultimately it comes back to just, um, I don't know, people coming together in these times and, and helping each other and just using new tools to do it. So I think, you know, all of it is sort of, a, a moment of, of human interest and goodness ultimately. And it just so happens that these tools can sort of help further that. And, and also, like your, your point about next door, I had a very similar experience with it. I signed up and I thought, oh, I don't want, I don't want to know all this about my neighbors. You know, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to know every time they think there's a sp suspicious person in the neighborhood that is actually the person that lives on the other side of me. And so I wondered, uh, are we less neighborly? Stacey Higginbotham has, her parents live in Houston and she was describing how they, she, they don't really know a lot of their neighbors. And so she actually dug in, found a Facebook group of people that live in her parents' neighborhood so that she could figure out what was going on because her parents don't use Facebook. And it's just so interesting that like she was more willing to communicate with those people than her parents were. And I, I do mm. think, I definitely think that we are more neighborly. And I mean, when I was thinking about this, I'm like, well, you know, I, we, you and I chat on Twitter, um, back and forth, and I would much rather do that than the person that actually lives next door to me. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> and, it's true yeah, though. And it's like, you find someone that you might have more in common with across the world. I mean, across the United States, or maybe even across the world than the person that lives next door to you. Yeah, I, I, that that's that's a tough one because like there certainly is a, a little bit of like, you know what I mean? That that I I don't know my neighbors. Uh, the the one neighbor that I do know, I only know them. <laughs> we we don't get along because uh, he was not happy with something. Uh, he was not happy with my dog's uh, barking on occasion, which is something that we fixed. But be before we were able to take care of, of sort of training them to not be loud outside, um, he had some thoughts on how I was supposed to handle the situation that involved like physically harming my animals. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'm done with you now that you're trying to tell me to do this. So like, I don't know any of my other neighbors except for this one that I had the bad experience with. So yeah, I'd rather hop on Twitter and talk to my friends who like love animals and don't want to talk about abuse 
using them uh, to, to get them to be quiet. It's ridiculous. Uh, so, I, yeah, I guess I'm not as neighborly in the sense that the people who live, you know, on either side of me or across from me. But at the same time, I do think we are maybe more open to uh, getting to know new people across the world. At the same time, are we just getting to know new people who are just like us? And so that's, I guess it depends on how you define neighborly. And we could certainly go down a rabbit hole here. But um, yeah, there, there's some sort of to it. But uh, I would hope that, you know, in a situation like this, that that happened, you know, people can come together, even even if they haven't been neighborly, I think when you're in a situation where it's it's better to work together than 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 you do, and it it ultimately leads to I don't know better for for everybody in that situation. Yeah, and I mean that's what we're hearing and seeing from Houston. Um, I grew up in Houston, and I've you know talked to I don't I don't have family there anymore, but friends, and absolutely like when you know that that is what we have seen and heard, uh, just people really being neighborly, bringing out their boats, you know, being the Texans, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the great side of, of Texas, just volunteering. And, you know, when it's right in front of your face, uh, you know, no, people are, are very neighborly as opposed to maybe how they would be with their next door neighbors. And by next door, I mean, their next door neighbors. <laughs> 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 All right. I have a question for you. What do oh. you think people search for more? How to fix a toilet or how to use chopsticks? Chopsticks. Okay, you're wrong. According to researchers at Google News, people search for how to fix a toilet and how to use chopsticks at about the same rate. Uh, but Google assures us that this does not mean they are doing these things at the same time. They are not <laughs> fixing toilets and using chopsticks. That's what Google says. That's what they claim. Uh, but it's the same rate. And over time, it's been the same rate. It's fascinating. One of those causation or, you know, not 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 causation, correlation. Uh, but right. today, Google announced a project dedicated to how often people search for how to do particular things. They even have a world map showing where people are more likely to search for how to fix a light bulb or how to fix a washing machine. And I found this endlessly fascinating. Uh, did you check this out? What did you think, Micah? Yeah, so A, this this site is really neat. Uh, it's sort of a visual essay and there are animations and things like that. And and you sort of can pour through the data and, and learn all these cool new things. And, you know, I have yet to Google how to fix a toilet with chopsticks. But after reading this, <laughs> that might be something that I have to look up. No, I love this kind of stuff. I think this stuff is fascinating. I don't know if you've seen those. Every once in a while, there'll be maps that the people will post on Twitter. And it's like, this is the state that does this the most. Mm -hmm. So it's like the most used word in that state or what have you, or most misspelled word. I love this kind of data. And so seeing this and seeing kind of what people search for and where and at what frequency, all that stuff is just fascinating in and of itself. And I, I always would be the one, you know, using Google growing up, like to, to, to figure out how to do things on my own. I did not like asking for help in those situations. So it's like, I don't know if the, the front door broke and my mom was like, Oh, going to have to call your grandpa in to, to get the, I was like, no, 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 I'll figure it out and loved to fix those things. And, uh, that's, I, not too long ago, looked up like how to stop a dryer from squeaking. And it turns out you got to take the whole thing apart and you like grease this little area of it and then you put it all back together and it was a nightmare, but it was a lot of fun at the same time. So I don't know how much uh, how to fix a dryer comes up, but uh, I certainly contributed to that not too long ago. Well, apparently in Libya, a lot of people search for how to fix a washing machine. Like that world map, I don't know if you can bring it up, Kevin, but it has little icons for different places for where people search for things and they're bigger if they search more often for them. And, and for some reason, Libya, they have a giant washing machine there. And um, I don't know if it looks like the world map. I don't know if you need to scroll. There it is. You passed it. That's the world in washing machines and toilets. <laughs> and, <laughs> and refrigerators, so, right? right? Yeah. And right there in the middle um, is the washing machine a little to the left. Yep. Is that Libya? Yeah. Yeah. Giant washing machine in Libya. Wow. I don't know if anyone knows why. I I would like to know. <laughs> they have a lot of washing machines break apparently. I, I guess, or no one taught them from a young age. I don't know, but I never learned how to fix a washing machine from a young age. <laughs> 
Oh, shake the sand out first, John in our studio says. That. <laughs> shake the sand yes. out of your clothes first. There you go. That's a good, yeah. <laughs> well, my daughter chastised me recently. And she said, why don't you teach me how to cook? And I was like, well, because I don't know how to cook. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but she said that she burned a grilled cheese when she was making a grilled cheese sandwich. And her friends were like, how do you not know how to make a grilled cheese sandwich? And she oh, said no. she looked on YouTube how to make a grilled cheese sandwich uh, and YouTube failed her. So I do actually know how to make a grilled cheese sandwich and I taught her how to do it. And uh, so now I'm winning the mother of the year award, I think. Yeah, um, clearly. And you like saved some Snapchat streaks, I'm sure, by by <laughs> making sure that she knew how to do grilled exactly. cheese sandwich. Exactly. Yes, I saved this. But that's the thing, like so many things that we learned from our parents. Um, you know, I'm older than you, so maybe you were learning these things on YouTube uh, since 2005. But um, I was already an adult by then, so <laughs> I knew everything. <laughs> Actually, I knew not, it all. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I... I, I I think that certainly as because I do start you do start to see sort of younger generations, some of my younger siblings um, just will find out sort of from themselves. Whereas I think that at one point there was more of a, of a sort of trade skill sort of teaching that happened, like how to fix a tire is something that maybe one of your parents taught you or your grandparents. And uh, my granddad was a handyman through and through. And so like I learned a lot of things from him. But my partner didn't ever learn those things. So like if I wasn't here, then Google would have to be the the place to, to get answers. And yeah, it's, it's interesting as we sort of go on. And I think we keep maybe less, uh, less of the less information, I think, in our brains uh, in, in, certain, in a certain way, some of the, the more practical skills and things like that, and what we need to keep up here versus what we can just quickly get because we're always connected to the internet. And so that's why I think, you know, that there's less of a, of a need to have like every single arithmetic function in your brain to sort of figure out how to do, I don't know, Pythagorean theorems and whatnots, because we can just sort of uh, ask our devices. There's probably uh, an echo skill for that or something. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, you spotted a, an interesting news story today about how CNN reporters woke up this morning to learn that their bosses could now read their Slack direct messages uh, what's going on here and how do we find out if our bosses are reading our Slack channels? Yeah. So here's what, here's the first bit of advice I'm going to give you. Um, Matthew Panzerino over at TechCrunch was, uh, was so I, I, I tweeted about like how you can look and see if Slack was doing this. And he had mentioned like, this is just like standard corporate policy. It's like my first bit of, of, of advice or caveat to give is to just say, yes, most of the time, if you're working for a company, like a corporate company, Anything that you send back and forth, you should just expect that that stuff is available to your employer and, you know, never treat that stuff as if it's the sacred thing that they can't see. Like you, you're better to side on just expecting that you should communicate with people privately rather than using these sort of uh, public forms that are given to you. Um, but what what this specific thing is, Slack calls them compliance exports. And I think it was it, it was a few years ago that they came out with this um, ability and what it allows you to do, what it allows you know your, your bosses to do if they turn this on is get all of the private messages that you send. So direct messages in Slack and, you know, public communications and communications in like those private or locked channels can all be seen and read by your employer. Now, there are some interesting things involved. Um, you have to like, first you have to sign up for it and everybody gets to know about it if, if, you uh, enable it. Like you get a message from Slack button that says, hey, they've turned on compliance exports. And um, when if a company wants to receive like the, the direct messages and things like that, they have to send in via snail mail a letter with the company's uh, letterhead on it that says, hey, this is what we want. Can you send it to us? And Slack will send them just all of it. They, you know, it's it's not sort of like you can target somebody and say, I just want this one employee's uh, direct message stream. No, they send you all of it and you sort of have to go through it yourself. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean anything like people can still get what they want. These companies can still find the exact information that they want. It just like sort of takes some time and adds, I guess, a little bit of friction to maybe discourage it. But the fact is, 
you know, when when CNN turned this on and everybody got that notification, people were like, what in the world? And I think it's important, again, to note, uh, hey, you know, this is something that happens. This is most of the time you you should definitely read through like those pamphlets that you get at the beginning. And if you ever had to do those silly video tutorials that have quizzes at the end from HR, make sure you're reading all of that stuff and you know sort of what you're agreeing to. But all of that aside, if you're wanting to figure out if your company has enabled this in your Slack, you go to your Slack team name dot Slack dot com. So like uh, we'll use my company as an example, the, the company that I work for. So it's Mobile Nations. It's, it's uh, Mobile Nations dot Slack dot com slash account slash team. So your your sort of uh, team's Slack account slash account slash team, you scroll all the way down to the bottom and there's a compliance exports thing. And it will say, um, depending on whether you have it set up or, or whether your company has it set up or not, it will say compliance exports are not enabled for your team. So that was the case uh, for the company that I work for. And um, you might have it where it says they are. And then you know that your bosses could at any time take your direct messages and you know read them if they wanted to. So I think it's it's more it's just awareness uh, because some people do skip over this stuff or sort of you know read through the fine print. It's like terms and conditions that they just click accept, accept, accept. Just knowing whether or not your company can get this information on you, I think is important. Well, this made me think of the Gawker trial because that, you know, if you followed that at all, that that was a key bit of evidence. They were joking, like a lot of Gawker reporters were joking about Hulk, Hulk, Hulk Hogan's sex tape and making jokes about it. And, you know, and so that was used as evidence. And so when you like I think about that every time I use Slack. <laughs> you know, right. just that I don't I don't know what sort of situation that you know we would be in in order that our Slack messages would be used in a trial. But it's you know, and it's a good it's a good reminder. Um, whatever works, I think, because it's true. I mean, you know, don't put anything in email. Don't put any anything at really anywhere. Just we should just speak to each other if you <laughs> or just. Send the well, don't even send a letter, I guess. Yeah, I was going to say, just send a letter in the mail if you have something that you need to say that's really... But uh, that could also be uh, taken and used. Um, you know, so so every time I'm talking, uh, you know, I'm saying saying some secret things about Georgia Dow that I, you know, don't want, then I, I make sure that those don't go into Slack. No, I'm kidding, Georgia, aren't you? <laughs> just, just, a joke, just a joke. This is our birthday weekend, so we have to... Yeah, be like, woo. <laughs> well, after the break, Micah and I will share our favorite Amazon Echo skills or some of the ones that you might find useful. But first, let's take a minute to thank Grasshopper, the sponsor of this episode. Grasshopper is a virtual phone system designed for entrepreneurs. So it works just like a traditional phone system, but you don't have to buy any new hardware. You can just use your phone. You can use your iOS phone or your Android phone. You can even use your iPads or your uh, tablets. It's just an iOS or an Android app. And then callers can reach you wherever you are on your mobile phone. Grasshopper allows you to keep your existing number so that you can maintain your brand. And then when you make a call, your client sees your Grasshopper caller ID. They don't see your personal phone number. You can keep that private. Simply select a toll-free or a local number, record a custom greeting, and add multiple extensions for your business. If you're a local entrepreneur, if you want to, if your business is about being in your town, then choose your area code. So that will make you look, uh, you know, more that you're for their town. Toll-free numbers are great for marketing. So if you want to look more professional, if you don't care about what town you're in, then Get yourself a toll-free number and then make your business sound more professional. You can set up department and employee extensions with custom call forwarding to any phone in the world. You can also get all your voicemails emailed to you as audio attachments. You can send and receive SMS text messages from your business number. You can join over 250,000 Grasshopper customers today. Plans start at just $12 a month and you also have a 30-day money-back guarantee. Turn your smartphone into a business line with Grasshopper and you can save $50 on your order. All you have to do is go to trygrasshopper.com slash twit. That's trygrasshopper.com slash twit. And we thank Grasshopper for their support. So Micah, you recently wrote about your favorite Amazon Echo skills or the best Amazon Echo skills. So I thought you could share some of those and then I'll tell you some of the ones that I use regularly. Um, I have my uh, Echo Dot here and I changed my trigger word. Here it is. Beep. 
I changed my trigger <laughs> word. That's what I call it to echo. So uh, I'm not going to say the other word. And if your trigger word at home is echo, you might want to press the microphone button and then it'll turn red and then it won't set off and you won't, uh, we won't order you any new TVs or anything. So, <laughs> all right, I turned it on. Uh, so what, uh, yeah, what do you want to start? What you, let's start with one, one that you feel is really uh, helpful to people. Yes. Okay. So you, you kind of have to like um, trivia and and facts and things like that. I love just sort of learning a new fact every day. And so I, I, I'll name one that's just for facts. And then I'm going to name one that I think is actually super helpful. I know that's you said one, but I'm going to do two. Sorry. No, you're, uh, I'm going to ask you for many. I just want you, okay, cool. you what, just start wherever you want. So curiosity is a fun skill um, because it's sort of just like a daily little uh, not bath. That's not the right word. Bath for your brain. No, it's not a bath for your brain. It's a little just a blip of, of information to add to your brain. So sometimes you can get trivia, you can get sort of news and discoveries and uh, it just sort of like lets you know some of the stuff that's out there, you know, new new breakthroughs in science and, and things like that. That is the curiosity skill. And okay. so I, I, I like that one. Um, just okay, just to sort of on. like learn new things. Go okay. ahead. So yeah, can we try it? Yeah, you should. Yeah. Okay. So I noticed with all of these, you don't have to enable, do you not have to enable any skills anymore? Are these skills, because all the ones you listed, I didn't enable and they just arrived. When you say the, the wake word, that's actually enabling, or when oh. you say the wake phrase, that enables the skill essentially. Oh, okay. So I say echo, open curiosity. Hi. Are you curious about emotions or yes. social sciences? Emotions. Let's learn about emotions. I found a topic called anhedonia is the inability to feel pleasure. Oh, that's sad. Mm. What if you no longer enjoyed being outdoors, listening to music, hanging out with depressing. friends, or even eating pizza? If you've ever seen a TV commercial for depression, you're mm. probably familiar with this issue. The inability to take pleasure in activities you once found enjoyable, a condition known as anhedonia. Thank you. Oh, that was dark. <laughs> this is so fun. Let's keep going. Are you curious about mosquitoes? Or paranormal? Paranormal. <laughs> uh, Echo, stop. Thanks um, for being curious. You're welcome. That was just a. That was just how far the assistants really need to go. In case we, in case we were laughing over uh, after she talked about anhedonia, the inability to feel pleasure while eating pizza, which sounds so sad. Uh, she said that was so fun. <laughs> So, wow, I thought that the cure for anhedonia was eating pizza, um, <laughs> but apparently not. No, that luck of the draw there was some bad luck on, on that sort of being the first one. But uh, I don't know if you heard there at the end, it asked, like, do you want to learn about something? And then it said Mosquitoes. paranormal. Mosquitoes oh. are paranormal. Like both of those sound really cool. Um, so that that's sort of a fun one where you can learn little tidbits if you don't end up getting like put a, put off by the first thing coming across saying you can't be happy eating pizza. Uh, so the, the other one that I want to mention, and that's because this one is just really, uh, it's, it's branded, uh, TM hashtag branded hashtag, whatever. Uh, but it's the tight stain remover skill. And basically like if you, you know, someone comes running in and they've got grass, my, my dog comes running in and has grass stains all over its bandana, uh, I guess, then I can ask the, the skill to how to, how to basically get rid of that, that, uh, stain and it'll help you figure out what step-by-step -step instructions on how to get rid of a particular stain. So coffee, ink, wine, grass, probably blood, et cetera, uh, 200 different stains. Okay. So what if I said, uh, do I, what do I have to say for, for that Start one? by saying, uh, echo, open tide. Echo, oh, echo, open tide. Stains are a pain, but tide has you covered. What type of stain would you like to remove? Blood. <laughs> oh no, a blood stain. Let's clean that up. I'll guide you through removing the stain. And I'll also put a card in the Alexa app for reference. Tide recommends the following three steps. Step one, rinse with cold water. Step two, soak garment in liquid detergent in cold water for 30 minutes. Step three, wash according to care label. Would you like a text message outlining the stain removal steps? Oh, that's uh, that is uh, nice. Uh, no, stains thank are you. a pain, but no. Tide has you covered. Okay. <laughs> what type of stain would you like to remove? Echo, stop. Remember. 
to remove a tough stain. Just ask Tide. Um, okay, so do you think now I'm put on this list? Like, she's removing <laughs> blood from stuff. Let's start yes. watching her out. <laughs> yes, that's exactly. Okay. Especially after the last one where it's like, okay, so you can't, you're not happy when you eat pizza. There's blood stains all over your clothes. We didn't look into this person. Uh, so yes, I, I think that that one's like, it's really neat. And with, with over 200 different stains that you can sort of get help with, I think that's cool. And like the text message thing, that is is pretty handy. And that's where you have to go into the app and, and you know, give it your phone number and stuff like that. But uh, that's helpful. Now, the next one, or do you want do you want more from me? Um, well, uh, I'll do one. How about I do one? Yes, next. Excellent. Okay, I use an email program called Astro, um, and they have a skill where they they will read my email. I also use a, another email program called Newton that would let me that would read my email but would not let me respond. But Astro reads and lets me respond like with quick replies. You know, thank you. Um, so I w- I wanted to do a live. Uh, you know, demo of my email. Hopefully um, something uh, really personal won't come up, but you know, <laughs> it'll just teach me not to send personal things via email like we said before. So, <laughs> There's blood stains in the clothing. Uh, Echo, ask Astrobot to read my email. You can say, read priority messages, read other messages, read V, I, P, messages or read start messages. I think that was VIP. Read... Uh, other messages. First message from TechCrunch received on August 30th at 10.31 a.m. How are you getting to disrupt SF? Hmm. Say read to read this message or next for next message. Echo, stop. Oh, I, I didn't reply. Goodbye. Uh, so those, yeah, that was some spam about uh, TechCrunch disrupt, but I could have replied to it, I guess. Um, let me try another one. Uh, Echo, ask Astrobot to read my email. You can say, read priority messages, read other messages. Read priority read messages. I, P, messages or she read start me talk messages. While she was talking. Yeah. Read priority messages. First message from Robert Belecker, SJ, received today LSR. at 4.09 p.m. Coverage for Leo. Say read to read this message or next for next message. Respond. You have one priority message Mm. and 19 other messages. Reply. Would you like to read them? Reply. How do you want to reply? Here are a few options. Say reply with, followed by, sounds good, running late, yes, no, out of the office, end of day, thanks. Reply with, awesome. Should I send a reply saying, awesome? Yes. Reply sent. Say next for next message. Echo, stop. So you Goodbye. could do you could do those. I could have used the sounds good because that usually mm-hmm. works for most emails these days. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you could you can uh, leave a message you know with your own uh, words as well. One thing I learned the first time I sent that is you know like with Siri you say question mark and it puts a question mark. Astrobot mm-hmm. um, actually says the word question mark, which can oh, be embarrassing. No. <laughs> but it was embarrassing. All right, now you go. Uh, oh, dear. Um, okay, I'm going to do... What about oh, Earplay? Dear, is... Earplay was on the list. I like that one. Earplay was on the list, yeah. Earplay was... It, it's 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 a fun one. It's a story. So you can actually like use it to have an interaction with uh, with the echo oh crud i just said it again but anyway you can you can have interaction and sort of play back and forth so it's it's sort of choose your own adventure and it, it's a lot of fun should we try that one yeah give it a go okay echo <laughs> start earplay welcome back to earplay to continue from your story bookmark say resume you can also say options hmm. resume do you warn her Kiss her or turn around. This is right in the middle of the story. Kiss her, obviously. You lean in and kiss her. It's awkward at first. You can feel her trying to look around you towards the front door. But then she relaxes. For a moment, the restaurant seems to go completely This does silent. have a mature warning. I should have said that. She's intoxicating. Unless there was something in your drink. She pulls back slightly, and you feel her breath on your neck as she whispers in your ear. I 
need you to hide something for me. Oh. Echo, oh, she re- start over. Are you sure you want to start over and yes. delete your current bookmark? Yes. You can say delete. Delete. To confirm bookmark deletion or cancel to abort this action. Delete. Bookmark deleted. Starting your story over from the beginning. Okay, so it's a choose your own adventure. This is called earplay. Hello, testing. This is Dave. If you can hear me, say either pancakes or rutabaga. Rutabaga? <sighs> rutabaga. Interesting choice. I'll be calling your psychologist after we finish. <laughs> but first, the demo. Now, earplay is all about stories, so we're going to tell a story together with you as the main character. You'll hear prompts like the one I just gave, except instead of random foodstuffs, they'll be choices for what to do in the story. Here's your next prompt. When you're ready to start, say, ready. Ready. It's a great restaurant, but your guest is late. He's always late. You've texted twice, and now you're toying with the silverware, wondering if you should just order, when suddenly a young woman you've never seen in your life sits down at your table. She looks anxious. Pretend you know me. Do you <gasps> ask questions or play along? What do we do, Micah? Play along. Play along. <laughs> so glad you could make it, you say. I'm starving. Let's order. All right, Echo, smiles. stop. <laughs> How far have you gotten in this story? Harrowing, harrowing. <laughs> um, no, I, I actually I tried it out a long time ago uh, when it first came out, and so a lot of a lot of this definitely changed. And like I'm listening to this, and like, oh man, I need to give this app a go again. It's been a while. Uh, certainly, some interesting stories that can get told there. But yes, keep in mind that um, they can be a little mature. So that's one of like the downsides of having the speaker that blasts audio into your space is that um, if they're you know some less mature ears around, then uh, that could be a bit of an issue. But um, as long as you keep that in mind, I think these are pretty fun to uh, play around with. It looks like there's an iOS and an Android app also. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is fun. I tried right when they, were, the, when they started having skills, there was a choose your own adventure skill that I tried that wasn't, it, I, maybe it was like Bruce Wayne something. Do you remember that one? It wasn't, it wasn't very good. I didn't. Yes. Uh, so I've actually come across a few that were just like, oh, okay, I'm done with this <laughs> because it was, it, it, it sort of felt like you're kind of being railroaded down one particular path as opposed to sort of actually giving a choose your own adventure with that, that drama that was involved with uh, the earplay one. Mm-hmm. And Aneroid in our chat room is asking if there's a way to make it speak faster because it was too slow. That's a good question. Um, that's not something that I have the answer to at the moment, but uh, certainly you could ask it maybe to speak faster and see if it would. Um, I don't think that there's a setting in the Echo skill or in the Echo settings that lets you just like crank up the, the speed. But mm-hmm. again, not 100% confirmed on that. Um, but I think that's something that they should add because with that email skill, like I, I think it's a cool idea, but not if you have to wait every time for them mm-hmm. to say all the options over and over again if they have to be read so slowly. Like once you get to know the app, then it's like maybe you don't have to remind me every time what skills I'm or what replies I'm supposed to say next. Yeah, I think that these skills are always, they're, they're good for me like when I'm washing dishes or folding laundry, like when I'm multitasking. Um, and, you know, getting ready for work, that kind of thing, where it's like, I don't, you know, we're not sitting here waiting. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we're all we're all watching the pot and it's not boiling. And yeah. it's like, what's going on here? I tried so many of the other ones in this list. I feel like we've probably done enough, but if there's, but, yeah. but there's so many good, good ones. And that's true because there are so many skills. Like there's no, it's so easy to create a skill. There's not much of a barrier to entry, which is great. Uh, but then it takes a lot of work to find the good ones. So thank you for um, finding all the good ones. I don't want to give any more <laughs> of the ways. Go, go to iMore, uh, check out this article. Was, is there any more that you need to mention? We don't have to demo uh, it, but your yeah. favorites. Yeah. We won't demo it, and I actually didn't include it on the list, but anybody who's interested sort of in artificial intelligence and that kind of thing, um, check out, there's a thing called the 
A-L-E-X-A prize social bots. And you can trigger the skill by saying your wake word and saying let's chat. And what it lets you do is that these different universities are competing for this, uh, this, this prize to sort of have a social bot. And the difference between the other things is like, it's exactly what I was talking about. With other uh, skills and other bots, you sort of hear what your options are to say back, and then you say those options back. This is a social bot, so you're supposed to be communicating with it. It's basically listening the whole time. So you talk to it, it says things back, and then you can immediately reply with what you want to say, and it's always kind of ready for your next thing. So it's a little bit, I, I didn't include it in the best skills because it's honestly not. It's these different people sort of trying to compete to make a really cool social bot. But it's sort of fun just like seeing what this thing is capable of and like having a conversation with your echo about uh, baseball or the weather or mosquitoes or eating pizza and feeling happy and not sad. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, so we have some feedback. We got we got a, an email from Sean. Sean writes about our discussion that we had. I'm sure you've heard of this, Micah, that Chuck E. Cheese is replacing its animatronic giant singing animals with video screens. And Sean says, I fully understand and agree with your thoughts on Chuck E. Cheese. I am 40 and I too grew up with both the incredible showbiz pizza and the copycat Chuck E. Cheese. As a child, showbiz was a magical and fun place. I could eat surprisingly awesome pizza. So many stories about pizza mm. today. See a fun, amazing <laughs> show and play video games. It was awesome. 30 plus years later, I find Chuck E. Cheese restaurants to be gross, unclean, poorly kept places where the employees seem to hate their existence. And to be fair, if I worked there, I would too. Uh, so yeah, harsh words for Chuck E. Cheese from Sean. <laughs> it's heartbreaking. But yeah, I, I remember showbiz as well. Did you ever go to a showbiz? I remember Chuck E. Cheese as a kid and it wasn't that the place, I mean, they are, they're all sort of filled with people who would rather not be there and it's scary and dark and it makes me sad because when I was a kid, it was not that way. And like the thought of losing those animatronic creatures for just televisions is heartbreaking because those animatronic creatures were so cool. They were. I mean, I never found them scary as a kid. Like that's what, you know, when you get a little bit older and you're like, oh, people like found them terrifying. But I always, I, I always thought they were them. cool. Me too. Wanted to be friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese, fun for everyone in the family. Yeah. TNT's fan of the day is Ford, who says, late at night watching TNT, I paused the video and this happened. Stare into the abyss and the abyss stares back. Sometimes that is, I don't know if you can see this, Micah, but um, yeah, it's one of those pauses where it's in between the, um, the fade. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're fading out of or into, but um, this is much more scarier than the animatronics. That, yes, I would choose Chuck E. Cheese animatronics over that any day. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, thank you uh, for sending us a picture of you watching. We love to see how you watch or listen, record a video or take a picture of yourself or your setup, post it to Instagram, Google+, Twitter, or Facebook. You know how it works. Use the hashtag how I watch TNT and we will find it. And finally... Pour one out for Juicero or Juicero. <laughs> the $400 ju juicer making startup. A juice making startup, it's shutting down. Uh, bring on all the puns you can. Um, that's what I spent most of the day thinking about. Uh, now, Juicero, if you don't remember, they were trying to, uh, they had this $400 juicer and they um, were going to pivot because people said that was way too expensive. Uh, they were looking for a $200 device, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. Um, so Bloomberg did a video several months ago showing this was a, a $400 device that would squeeze these packs of juice that you, or fruit, I guess, that you ordered. They were also expensive. It would squeeze them and uh, in this device and then you'd have freshly squeezed juice and Bloomberg showed that you could just squeeze it with your hands and it was quite easy to do. Um, and uh, that then they got a lot of bad press. And I wonder if they if they hadn't gotten all that bad press, if they were still would still be around, the CEO, Jeff Dunn, tried to explain that they knew this all along. They knew that you could squeeze it with your own hand, but the people they were trying to sell it to don't want to squeeze things with their own hands. They're too busy doing other things. <laughs> uh, so I, I don't know. Um, I mean, a lot of Internet of Things, like a lot of the smart home stuff, a lot of the stuff that you cover is probably just stuff that you can do on your own. Um, mm -hmm. but you don't want to. So you think Juicero is getting what they deserved or do you think they, they're getting unfairly targeted? So I didn't have any malice toward the company in the beginning until the CEO came out with this whole thing about how 
uh, the way that it works with the, the, the like the whole thing about how he tried to sell that this was a, a better experience and that the way that they push the juice against the the <laughs> back of it is is different. And it's not about that. It's about the experience of the person who comes home from work and just doesn't want to squeeze a bag. It's I thought it was silly. Um, and ultimately it was sort of trying to sell snake oil, except it's like juice oil. And it was just not. <laughs> Not, yeah, that's when I was done with the company. So I'm glad that it, they're not going to be selling these, you know, sort of pointless devices to a bunch of people because I think that it was sort of a robbery, if I may say. You may say that. But I think that I think we're all getting smarter about this kind of stuff. I am currently uh, reviewing the Tovala oven. Have you tried that? No, but I saw I'm jealous. I saw your tweets and I, I'm like, oh, man, I want to try this thing, this app. Uh, did you make grilled cheese with it? <laughs> no, not not yet, but I will. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's four hundred dollars, the same price as the Juicero. And I really um, so far, I really like it. But people are suspicious on Twitter. But I have found specific things reasons why I like it. First of all, as I said earlier, I don't cook. And so being able to just put stuff in the oven and press a button on my phone and then go upstairs is, is great. Um, not having to worry about looking at it. Do I need to turn it? Do I, you know, that a lot of people enjoy that kind of thing. And I know I mm -hmm. can do that kind of thing. I am able to do that kind of thing, but but I, I like to not do that kind of thing. So they they come, you know, people are calling it the Keurig for food, but it's not really like a Keurig. It doesn't squash everything up and pour it out into a onto your plate. It's just food in these tin pans and you put it in and then, you know, you press, you, you like scan the barcode and it knows exactly what it is. So last night I made, uh, it was quinoa and sweet potatoes and chicken. It was just a serving for one. I don't eat chicken. So I gave it to one of my boys and he loved it. And I think it was exciting for him to have an app involved with his dinner. I think that might've been part of it. And if that's what gets you to eat quinoa, then exactly, then it's, it's fine. I see. And I think just the fact that it's a it's an opportunity to maybe eat healthy where you might catch people eating. I don't know. I have a friend who literally buys like 36 packs of hot dogs and just like has a hot dog and a salad for, for many of his meals. And it's like, oh, no. So this is an opportunity where you're spending around about the same amount of money and you are actually eating more healthily than this is a cool thing. This is not just a replacement for your hands to squeeze juice into a bag. This is like a full on oven heating up device that can make food at the proper temperatures and all that kind of stuff. You don't know how long you have to cook. You don't have to worry about how hot the chicken needs to be, all that stuff, because it takes care of it for you. So I don't think the comparison sort of makes sense there in terms of like the, the way to, to cast it aside to be like, oh, no, this is just like the Juicero or Juicero. No, I don't think that's the case. All right. And I mean, I like that there's a higher setting for like, really tell me why I need this you know tell, tell mm -hmm. me why I personally need this I mean we we should have that for everything I think so yeah I, I have hope for internet of things devices that they're all they're all not going to go the way of the juicero in my opinion yeah I, there, there are plenty out there including our new popcorn couch that are <laughs> right. certainly going to be more important and and last a lot longer than the juicero right because I could just stop the video, I could rewind, but why should I when it can just see that I'm sleeping and stop <laughs> right then? I don't want to squeeze the remote with my hand. <laughs> yeah. Or what if it shocks you when you're asleep? Like it's a couch that shocks you when it, like it's watching your face. If it sees your eyes closed, you get shocked. You know, I don't want that <laughs> because then if it gets hacked then someone can shock me at any time, like that sounds like a bad deal. Okay. Well, Micah, last time we talked to you, you were uh, unduly fascinated with the Snapchat hot dog, um, and I know, and I know you mentioned your friend who eat hot, he eats hot dog and salads, uh, so that I would bring up the hot dog. Uh, has you, has your interest in the Snapchat uh, augmented reality hot dog changed at all since we last spoke? Listen, I take offense to the unduly comment there. <laughs> This, this is absolutely justified. I love that hot dog and that hot dog loves me and it's fine. I know I, I that my interest has not waned. I still think it's an adorable little thing that's just like so bizarre and Snapchat like I, I sort of came into more people's mind than it had been because of this Snapchat hot dog. And everybody made jokes about like, well, the stock is falling, but there's a Snapchat hot dog. So yeah, there's still a special place in my heart, which is on this side <laughs> for the Snapchat hot dog. <laughs> 
Well, Micah, thank you so much for joining us. Micah Sargent is a writer at iMore, very prolific, has so many. I wanted to talk about a bunch of your stories, but then I figured Aww. we'd just talk about this, the, the Alexa skills today. But you got a ton of stuff uh, on iMore, and you host, you're one of the hosts of the iMore podcast. That's what it's called, right? Mm -hmm. The iMore podcast. Yeah, iMore show. iMore show. And uh, Clockwise, which is an excellent podcast uh, that is on the six colors. Right or is that relay on FM? relay FM? Relay yeah. FM. Okay, can I no, can it all right? That's okay. There's uh, too, there's too, there's too many. <laughs> are you on another network besides iMore and Relay FM? The incomparable oh, okay. as well. Okay. Yeah, I you know do some shows on there, and then I also host a show with Christina Warren that's coming back soon. That's uh, Christina Warren used to work at Mashable, now works at Microsoft, and mm -hmm. it is called Cartoon Cast, and we talk about being adults who like watching cartoons. That is a great topic. Um, I And what network is that one on, or is that just independent? That's on the Incomparable, okay, on the, the incomparable. incomparable Network, which is Jason Snell's uh, network for the nerd podcast that he does. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Micah. Uh, where's the best place to follow you? <laughs> is there one place? Yeah, so you can you can follow me on Twitter at Micah Sargent. But if you're looking for all of those podcasts, if you're looking for all the things I do, you can literally go to www.chihuahua.coffee. And it is a page that has links to all of the different stuff that I do. Do you ever put videos from the Nest uh, cam of your dogs up there? You know, maybe I should do uh, some videos there. I haven't done that in a long time. In fact, I just got a comment on the Syrah or however we decided to put that, that said that I needed to post more photos of my dogs on the internet. So photos and videos of my dogs, uh, clearly I haven't done enough. I thought I was doing too many, but uh, that would be a good idea. Some some funny while I'm away and my Nest app thinks that there's a person, but it's really just my dog climbing around. You could make your yeah, dog they, famous. Your dog could have 12 podcasts. Dogs, <laughs> that's, dogs. that's my goal, honestly. I'm just my dog's uh, publicist. That's that's what my, my real job is. We all are. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Micah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. We'll see you soon. TNT records live every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. That's 2300 UTC. And you can find, you can watch at any of those times at twit.tv slash live. You can also be part of the show by emailing us at TNT at twit.tv. You can find us on Twitter at Tech News Today TV. And if you want to tweet at me to see pictures of my dog, you can do that at I'm Megan Maroney. Not I'm Megan Maroney, just at Megan Maroney. I am at Megan Maroney. And I want to thank our technical director and our editor, multitasker Kevin. And thank you to Mario for helping out in the studio. And thank to, thanks to you, 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 for talking tech with us. We'll see you Monday.